Hold on to your bones, because you're back with me, Skelly Wampus, in our Bite Size Redstone series. And today we are going to be talking about monostable circuits. Now if that sounds really confusing, don't worry, it's really not. What a monostable circuit does is it takes any pulse of redstone signal, be it a button push or a solid lever, and converts it into a very short little flash of redstone signal. And uh, we're just going to get right to it. So we're going to build probably the most common one that you'll see. We're going to have a block, a sticky piston with a conductive block on its face, another block, and a temporary block. I'm just going to place this here. And I'm going to use a sticky piston, simply because it's in my inventory and the lamps might start working kind of funky. Alright, so you're going to need your input going into this block. And then we're going to need a piece of redstone. And then a repeater. And that is it. You notice how that, uh, that piston just pushes right out and right back in really fast. And as I said, this this will work even with a solid redstone signal. Just like that. But, we're uh, not the comparator. We're going to use buttons just because it's simple. And one thing to note, if you're on Java Edition, uh, a sticky piston, when receiving a one tick pulse, will not hold on to its block. It will spit it out. And then whenever you hit the button again, then it'll pull it back in. But on Bedrock, that doesn't happen. And that's unfortunate. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to do another one. There are different variations. I'm not going to show you everything. I'm just going to show you a few. Okay, so this one, we've got a conductive block, which is our input. Okay, then we have a sticky piston, an observer, and then... This will be your output, just anything, whatever you're wanting to use. And you'll push it. And this observer will send that one tick pulse to that piston. Nice and simple. And here is the one that I usually typically use. I'm going to go ahead and set that down. Okay, so I'm going to do it over here. <laughs> Have a repeater going into the side of a comparator and then redstone connecting all that and then connect that and here's your input I don't know why I like this one so much it just seems really simple for me to remember these are also rather simple but this is just the one I use <laughs> okay so this next one is a little different it's kind of using the principle of the knot gate that we talked about in the circuit episode. So what we need is a conductive block with a redstone torch on its on its side. And then we need to place redstone right beside that torch. And then right beside our conductive block. Okay, and then we're going to put a repeater right here. Just so it doesn't freak out on us. And it will be extended except for it will be retracted for one pulse. And this is great if you're wanting a hopper to only allow one item through. That's what I generally use this for. And one thing you might notice right here, you see, these guys, the magic happens as soon as you hit the button. Whereas this guy, you have to wait until the button comes back. And if you've watched any other person's redstone videos, this is what's called a rising edge and falling edge circuit. Rising edge means it happens as soon as you hit the button. Right? As soon as I hit it, it happens. Whereas this one, like I said, you have to wait. This is called a falling edge monostable circuit. So I'm not sure any of them have really explained that. Because I had trouble understanding it as well. But that is what that means. So whenever they're talking at the speed of light, 
you'll know kind of what they're saying now. Okay, and the last one that I'm going to show you actually uses a mechanic that we've not used yet. So we're going to start out with a repeater, and then another repeater, and we're going to set the second one to two ticks delay. And then into this first repeater, as if it were a comparator, we're going to run another repeater, and we're not going to mess with that. And now we're just going to connect these up, hook up an input, and hook up our output. And you'll hit it, and you'll see this is a falling edge monostable circuit. Like we talked about, it happens when the button pops back up. And this uses a mechanic that repeaters have that I forgot to mention in the repeaters video. Um, repeaters, when powered, will lock and not accept a signal, or will hold the signal until they're not powered. But yes, uh, generally, the rising edge monostable... Wow, can't speak still. The rising edge monostable circuits just kind of tend to be more useful than the falling edge. I think it's generally just because we want it to move faster. I don't know, but we use them more. But I'm not going to leave them out. I wanted to be sure to show you, you know, this works. <laughs> and like I said, this one, I love this one. There's a lot of things that I do where I just want one item to come through. And this is the, this is the circuit for us. But I think that's going to be this episode on monostable circuits. If I'm flying, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like. And if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'm not sure what I should do on the next episode. Maybe T flip flops or clocks. What do you guys think? You want to know clocks or T flip flops? Leave a comment. Um, thank you guys for watching, though. <laughs> Toodles. Toodles.